welcome to Living Traditions Homestead. My name is Sarah. Well, as you can see, we are in prime tomato harvesting season. It is pretty crazy how many tomatoes our plants are producing. But on the other hand, we did plant almost 100 tomato plants. So, but hey, this is exactly what we were hoping for, exactly what we've been praying for, a bumper crop of tomatoes because here on our homestead, we use all of these tomatoes to can diced tomatoes, tomato sauce, tomato juice, salsa, and a lot of times barbecue sauce and ketchup. So this bumper crop is going to be put to good use here this summer. And recently I did a video showing how to can diced tomatoes. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure that you check that out. But today I'm going to be making and canning both tomato sauce and tomato juice out of the same tomatoes. This year I'm doing things a little bit differently than I've done in the past, so I'm also excited to show you just how I've mixed it up this year uh, to make things a little bit easier for me. I'm hoping that you find this process very easy and effective. Now there are lots of ways that you can make tomato sauce and lots of ways that you can make tomato juice. Some people blend all the seeds and the skins up and then boil it down on their stove for a while. I'm not saying that my method is the best, it's just what we're, is working best for me this year. Next year it might be different. Last year it was a little different too. So let's get started. We have a lot of tomatoes to work with today. Now before we go though, I do wanna tell you that Today I'm working with all slicing tomatoes. I'm not working with any paste tomatoes. There are really two types of tomatoes that you can grow, well three if you count cherry, uh, but these big tomatoes uh, you can grow slicing tomatoes like this, which are usually used on sandwiches. You can I use them for diced tomatoes. Uh, they're very good for tomato juice because they have a lot of water in them. They're very juicy. But paste tomatoes are a different type of tomato. They don't have as much juice. They're a lot more just like tomato meat. And that's great for making sauces because you don't have to boil out all of that water. So it takes a lot less time. But today, because our abundance of tomatoes is the slicing type of tomatoes, but I still need a lot more tomato sauce, I'm gonna be making tomato sauce out of slicing tomatoes. And at the same time, because they're so juicy, I'm gonna be harvesting some of that juice to then can tomato juice at the same time. It's kind of interesting. I really like doing this process because I feel like I'm like, you know, doing double duty at one time. I'm just like really being efficient and using everything that we are producing. So I don't know, maybe you think the same way. So let's get started. We've got a lot of work to do, but I am very excited to share with you the process that I'm using this year. We're gonna start off by coring all of these tomatoes. Today I'm working with two boxes of tomatoes. Yesterday morning, I'm not even kidding you, we harvested six boxes and two baskets of tomatoes. So I have a lot of work coming up for me in the next few days, but I love it, so it's okay. So these two boxes and maybe a partial other box is gonna fill my big roaster back here. That's what I'm hoping for. You might be able to hear in the background some strange noises while I have my pot on the stove heating up so it's making a little bit of noise. We're going to be using that in just a little bit. So I wanted to save time by getting that boiling. So like I said, we are going to be coring tomatoes. Tomatoes on the inside here have a core and it's, it's kind of hard and white. It doesn't break down well. Um, and so we're going to get rid of that. It's also the stem part here. So we're going to take that out. I use a tomato corer. You can see that here. Um, it looks a lot like a watermelon baller but it has little teeth on it and it really helps to scoop out that core. We're going to be giving the cores and the skins to the pigs. They love it. So we're just going to get started on doing that. Now these tomato cores I love. You can get them on Amazon. You can probably get them other places too uh, but if you'd like to learn more you can check those out in our Amazon shop. So I'm going to be filling up this bowl and a couple other bowls with tomatoes and then we'll get started skinning them. Oh, 
Okay, here we go. We're gonna skin these tomatoes. I've got three big bowls full of the tomatoes. We're gonna take all the skins off of them. The easiest way to do that is to put the tomatoes in boiling water, keep them in there until they split, and then put them in cold water or ice water to cool them down and stop them from cooking. Then the skins slip off so easily, makes this just a breeze. I put about eight or nine tomatoes in the water at once. Stir them around and really in no time they'll start to split. I've found that those that are really ripe will split really quickly, but if you've harvested them a little bit too early or if you haven't let them ripen up in the house long enough, then uh, sometimes it's, it prevents the tomatoes from splitting really well. So that's something to keep in mind. You can see it didn't take very long at all and these tomatoes are already split putting them in the cold water. I'm gonna stir them around a little bit. I'm gonna put the top back on here so it can get warm again while I process them over here. The tomatoes cool down in the water really fast. You can just take them out of the water and peel off the skin. See how nicely that peels off? And I'm just gonna put it in the bucket for the pigs. I'm going to do the same thing with the other seven that are waiting. Now a lot of people will dehydrate their tomato skins and then powder them and add them to their cooking and I think that is a fantastic idea. You should definitely try that. I have some digestive issues and the tomato skins don't agree with me so I don't do that process. Plus. We give the tomato skins to the pigs and it turns into bacon. The final step of this part of the process is to get the skinned tomatoes into the roaster. Now this is a Nesco 18 quart roaster oven. It can be used for lots of things, but really it's a giant crock pot. I absolutely love it because I do a lot of processing of tomatoes in large quantities. If you don't have a Nesco, you can just use your crock pot on low. It will do the same thing. So I, before I forget to tell you, I put the heat on 250 degrees on my Nesco roaster. So I'm going to take these tomatoes. If you are most comfortable using a cutting board, go ahead. Uh, but I'm gonna at least quarter these and maybe I'll uh, cut them into six pieces each. I'll do all of the tomatoes the same way and then start cooking them down. This process I normally do with our girls. We have a system where all three of us work really well together. One of the girls will core the tomatoes. Um, one of my other daughters will do the uh, putting them in the hot water and the cold water and sometimes skinning. And then I will be cutting up the tomatoes like this and sometimes, depending on the time frame, um, I might be doing the skinning and cutting up. It just depends on how backed up one part of the process gets. And so we can just whip through a couple boxes of tomatoes in no time. Uh, it really is easier with multiple people and with lots of sets of hands. So I'm gonna keep doing this whole process until we get all of those tomatoes cored, skinned, cut up, and put in the roaster, and then we'll check back when it's all filled up. Well, Grace was available to help me with the rest of that process, so we got that done in no time at all, and now my Nesco is just filled with tomatoes. So I plugged it in and turned it on 
up to 250 degrees and I'm just gonna let this start cooking down for an hour or two. The thing about these slicing tomatoes is that, like I said before, they're just filled with so much water. They make a very runny tomato sauce. Actually, it's about the consistency of tomato juice like V8 that you get from the store. I'm gonna cook these down so that the water starts separating from the meat of the tomatoes. That's why I didn't blend it. That's why I kept the tomato pieces in really big chunks. The water will start separating from the meat of the tomato. In a couple of hours, I'm going to come back and I'm going to start ladling off the juices that have separated from the tomatoes and I will save that and we'll can that as tomato juice. So we're going to leave it just sit here for a couple of hours and come back and start separating it. Well, it's been a little while. Let's check and see if there's been any developments or action in the Nesco with the tomatoes. Doesn't look a whole lot different, but let me show you what is happening down inside here. You can see if I put my ladle down in here. That a lot of the water is starting to separate out from the tomato meats. So I am going to actually be draining off a lot of this and putting it into jars and we'll keep that for tomato juice. I'm going to collect the juice in a half gallon mason jar like this. And I'll just keep using my ladle down in these little open pockets because the liquid will continue to fill up. We'll just keep ladling off all of this liquid. I'll come back to this every few hours, maybe two hours, maybe three, depending on what I have going on during the day. And I'll just keep ladling off more and more of the juices you can see here. And then in the end, we'll have tomato juice and tomato sauce. As it cooks down, more of the water and the juice will be released and we'll just keep taking more and more of it off and in the end, it'll be great because it's like, it's like a two for one. It's like a buy one, get one. It's kind of an awesome deal. It's a wonderful thing because it can just stay here working its magic. I can continue pulling off that liquid throughout the day and it allows me the freedom to go get other things done too and I don't have to worry about boiling down sauce on the, the top of the stove. This just seems really easy and nice for me. So the other day I did this whole process, but I was busy. We have family in town and so I could start the tomatoes, but I just didn't have time to do all of the canning. But I thought, hey, that would be perfect. I can save this in the refrigerator for a day or two and then bring it out and do a video for you all. So now I have shown you how to get started and I already have the end product here to show you. So I started off with the same amount of tomatoes as we have in the Nesco today. And I ended up throughout the day being able to ladle off one and a half gallons of liquid that we will can as tomato juice. And the tomatoes then cooked down and ended up being almost a full stock pot of the basically cooked down tomatoes. There's still a little bit of liquid on top, but I'm okay with that. So this is what I'm ending up with. I'll be able to can one and a half gallons of tomato juice and then whatever this tomato sauce turns out to be. Now I wanna talk with you a little bit about the tomato juice. The tomato juice that I have here that I've pulled off the tomato mixture is gonna be a lot thinner than if I would have just processed these tomatoes for juice. In that situation, I would take the skins off and I would run it through like a food mill type of machine and all of the pulp would still be there, all of the juice would be there, uh, the seeds would be removed and obviously the skins and that turns into a wonderful tomato juice also but it's a lot thicker. Kevin really likes this thin tomato juice just as well as the thicker tomato juice. So rather than getting rid of it and dumping it down, I'm just gonna can it. The thicker tomato juice we really like to add to soups, stews, chilies throughout the winter. And this thinner juice, it's more likely that we will drink it. Kevin absolutely loves it. So I just wanted to show you guys what the end result is of this process. Just 
sped up. Now that we've removed all of this juice and cooked these tomatoes down, the consistency is much thicker. Let me show that to you, see? See how thick that is? Now we're gonna blend this all up and turn it magically almost into sauce. Now, in years past, I have used an immersion blender, like a stick blender, and that's actually my preferred way to blend this all up. It is so fast and very thorough. However, my stick blender just broke last week. And Walmart doesn't have it, or Walmart is out. Maybe they don't even carry it, I don't know. But I need to order another one. So today I'm gonna to be using my blender. It's a Ninja blender. It will work really well, but I just wanted to let you know that either way works great. This is gonna go pretty quickly. I like to use a big measuring cup to help scoop rather than a ladle because it just goes by quicker. And I'm also pouring this into a heavy bottomed pot. We're gonna to need to warm this up and boil it for a little bit to make sure it's hot enough before we go through the canning process. And a big pot that is heavy bottomed really helps prevent the tomato sauce from sticking on the bottom of the pot. There, it's all blended up. Now we just need to turn on the heat. We're gonna put that on like a medium high heat. We're gonna bring that up to a boil. I'm gonna stir it pretty often to make sure that still it doesn't stick to the bottom. But once that starts boiling, we can can it. While the tomato sauce is heating up to a boil, I'm also gonna start prepping some of this tomato juice. Now, when I, when I ladled off a lot of that liquid, some bits and some tomato seeds came with it. So I'm actually going to uh, strain this before we put it into a pot. The pot will catch all of the juice and then it will be ready for us to heat that up too. So I've just been storing this tomato juice in the refrigerator until I have time to can it. I've mixed it up a little bit and now we're just gonna pour it through this strainer and it will catch all the bits and all of the tomato seeds. All right, my tomato sauce is just about there. I put my canning pot on the stove and got that heated up. It's turned off right now, but it's hot, so it'll come up to a boil in a jiffy. I brought out all my jars. I made sure that they're clean and sanitized. Right now they are hot in preparation for the sauce to go in them. But first we need to add a couple things to our jars. The first thing that is required is citric acid. You either need to use citric acid or bottled lemon juice to increase the acidity of your tomato sauce. Now that might seem weird because you think of tomatoes as being acidic, but tomatoes really vary between tomato on how acidic they are. And we need to level the playing field there and make sure that they're all acidic enough to be water bath canned. So we are gonna be adding one quarter of a teaspoon of citric acid per jar. I'm using pint-sized jars. That's just the best for us and our family is to can tomato sauce in pint-sized jars. You can can them in quart-sized jars, just use a half of a teaspoon of the citric acid. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then afterwards, I'm going to add a half of a teaspoon of salt to each jar. I am liking more and more already having salt in my tomato sauce. Uh, that is just a personal preference. You can completely leave it out. And this year is the first year I've been adding salt in my canning. I enjoy it, but it's not required. These are all set. Let's get ready to can. Okay, I am all set. I know that my canner fits 12 pint-sized jars, so that's what I have ready here. I also know that this is way more than 12 canning jars. I'm not sure if I'm gonna have time to can all of this plus all of the juice. So I'm just gonna start off with 12 pints of the sauce 
and then move on to the juice so that I can show you what to do. So I'm going to be filling these pint-sized jars up. We're going to fill them up to one half inch from the top. You can measure to make sure that you're a half inch from the top. I am. But after you've done this long enough, you can just kind of eyeball it and figure that out. But I want to encourage you beginners to use one of these measuring tools to make sure that you have the correct spacing. So that is all finished. I wiped off the rim. Did you see that's like automatic for me now? I forgot to even explain it. I wiped off the rim. We're gonna put on a lid and a ring and screw it on there. Now you can either put this right into the canner while you do the rest of this, or you can just put it aside and uh, wait until you have them all done. Today, I'm going to put them aside and wait until we have them all done. So again, we're gonna start with our jar. Ladle that in. We're gonna ladle it all the way up to half an inch above the top of the jar. Wipe off the rim so that it's nice and clean and it will make a perfect seal. Put on a new lid, put on a ring, and tighten it to finger tight. Not too tight or your jar could explode in the canner. Set it aside and do it all over again. Now that all of my jars are filled, we can start loading the canner. All 12 are in here. So I turned the heat back on. Once this comes to a boil, we're gonna set our timer for 35 minutes. That's how long these need to process. But actually, because of our altitude, I need to increase that by five minutes. So we'll be processing ours for 40 minutes. If you're not sure of your altitude, you can search your city on Wikipedia and it will tell you. And then you can find online the altitude charts and you can see if you need to increase your processing time too. Well, the timer has gone off for our canner. So I'm gonna turn the heat off and I'm actually gonna remove the lid. We're gonna let it sit here for five minutes without the lid on and without the heat on. And the reason we do this is to let it cool down and just settle down a little bit while it's still in the canning pot so that when we remove it, the temperature difference isn't so great that it causes the liquid to rush out the top or siphon out of the top. So in five minutes, we'll come back and we'll unload the scanner. In the meantime, I have my juice over here at a boil. We're gonna start canning these so that as soon as I take these sauce jars out, I can put the juice jars in. We'll bring the juice over. But just in case I have some extra jars open, I'm gonna put the sauce back on and heat that back up. Okay, with the juice jars, same as before. There's a quarter teaspoon of citric acid and a half a teaspoon of salt in each one. They're all clean, sterile, and hot. We're gonna fill these up to a half of an inch to the top of the jar. We're gonna wipe off the rim. Ooh, that's hot. Wipe off the rim. Put a brand new lid on there and a ring. Put it on finger tight. Woo! Set it aside. And then keep going. Well, all of those jars are filled. It was 11 pints of juice and one pint of tomato sauce. Woo -woo. So now we're gonna take the jars out of the canner and switch them with these. And so we'll, then we'll have two batches of canning done. And that is pretty awesome.
Now in goes the juice. Again, the juice and the sauce need to process for 35 minutes, 40 for me because of our altitude. Then when it's finished, take the lid off for five minutes and then we will finish our canning for the day. Well, you guys, this was such a good project for me to get done today. And I'm so glad I was able to share with you how I'm making tomato sauce and salvaging the tomato juice that I ladled off so that these slicing tomatoes can still be made into fantastic sauce. I hope you guys learned a bunch today. Make sure to share this on your social media so other people know that they can make a fantastic sauce out of regular slicing tomatoes and make some fabulous juice as well. Thanks so much for stopping by the homestead, you guys. Take care and God bless.